I have lived in Chattanooga quite a while now, and I have traveled down Brainerd Road a lot. And occasionally I notice the sign for the Brainerd Missionary Cemetery. But until today, I have never stopped to see what this is all about. Back before the Trail of Tears, there was a missionary settlement on the site that taught Christianity to the Indian nation that lived around here. There's a shopping center over here to my right where the main housing used to be. There's another shopping center over here, shopping center behind. Shopping over here. All that remains is the cemetery. Everything else is gone. But this has been here longer than the Trail of Tears. Most of the headstones here, like all of these here in front of me, they've been overgrown with moss. You can no longer read anybody's names of anybody who's buried here. But there are a few over here that have stood the test of time. And there are a lot of markers here in memory of people who worked here or those kinds of things. We talked in an earlier video about John Ross being the, uh, the head of the Cherokee Nation who founded Ross's Landing down by the river his father or grandfather is marked over here somewhere. I don't think he's buried here. I think there's just a memorial to that. So it kind of puts into focus how long this has been here. And pretty much all of the benches to sit on have been dedicated to people who have worked at preserving this place, going back um, all the way back to the Chickamauga chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution in 1895, and then another one in 1915, another one in 1918, uh, and then 1923, 1953. It has been upheld and put on the um, register of historic sites, I I think back in the 1970s. And while not much remains here, there's not a lot of graves, there's no history of the buildings that were here, it is a rather humbling place to come to nonetheless, to think about, I guess, the well-meaningness of white people. To me, the, the most humbling part of this is that People here were trying to do the right thing in their, as they saw it, only to have the government turn against them and remove all of the Indians from their rightful home. The Trail of Tears is a very sad blight on the history of our nation. Doesn't mean I don't love the nation, but I recognize and, I guess, try to remember both the good and the bad. And while not much remains of this area, let this plane go over. This is what you get when you make a video close to the airport. This is one of those videos where you have to follow your gut. I didn't really have a clear view of where I wanted to go today. And I, I decided I was going to go downtown. There's a new coffee shop down there that it was not new, but it's new to me. And I thought, well, maybe I'll go downtown and make a video about coffee. But it was kind of late in the day and it was hot. But I thought I'll drive downtown a different way than I normally do. And as I was going down Brainerd Road, I just happened to see this sign. And I thought maybe this is where I need to go today.
Uh, it was over 90 degrees, so I was looking either for something in the shade or <laughs> something inside. <laughs> and even being in the shade here didn't really help a whole lot. It was still really hot. There are a few things technically about this video that I'll discuss, but I, I just want to kind of throw this one thing in. I wish I'd put it in the video. I guess I am now. But that is that, you know, going to places like this and, re and being reminded of the Trail of Tears leads me back to that famous quote from Ronald Reagan of the nine, what is it, nine worst words in the English language. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. That is a universal truth that had been around forever. Anyway, so a couple of things. I, there's a scene there where I'm sitting on a bench and the camera's kind of cut off the top of my head. I should have looked at that scene before I walked away to do the next scene because I would have reframed that just a little bit to make sure that all of me was in there. However, in addition to that little problem, you know, I kept pointing here and pointing there, turning around, whatever. Well, that was just causing all kinds of havoc with my microphone under my shirt. So I did run all of the audio in, in the video. I ran all of the audio through Adobe Podcast Enhance at about an 80% level and then laid it back into the track. And that, that took all that out. So there, there are ways to get rid of that. It's just, you know, Anyway, there is a scene there also where I am um, talking about the different benches and the years that they are commemorating of the Daughters of the American Revolution group. And again, it was really poorly set up and I did not look at it before I moved on. When I start talking, I'm not in the frame. And then I walk across the frame. You see me walking across the frame. And when, I'm, when I get to the end, I'm out of the frame again. <laughs> so I had to go back in and grab a couple of shots I'd already used. And, and one shot, instead of me walking toward the camera, I used a little bit of me walking away from the camera to get set up for the shot and just sort of place that over the talking to cover up the fact that I'm not in the scene. So there are ways around these kinds of mistakes that we make. The other thing that I liked, um, I was standing in a spot getting ready to do a scene. And when you, when you plug the microphone in, a lot of the background noise gets really, really soft. But if you leave the microphone unplugged, and I'm talking specifically about the receiver on the phone, if you leave that out, the microphone inside your phone will pick up all the ambient noise really, really well. And there was this bird cawing overhead. And it was really sort of random. It wasn't, it wasn't um, you know, like every three seconds or whatever. It was kind of weird the way it was spread out. And so I just turned the camera on and let it run for about 30 seconds, knowing that I wasn't going to use the video at all. And I put that audio clip under me walking at the beginning of the video after I got into the cemetery. Not, I didn't put it under going through the gate, but after I got into the cemetery, I put that underneath everything and just sort of let it, you know, sit there really low as, a, as an additional background noise. There was a lot of stuff that went into putting this one together. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really glad that I stopped because there is just so much history around Chattanooga here that I have not seen yet. And this was one of them and I need to do a little more research on it. Anyway, you can let me know what you think about the video in the comments and the way it was kind of all pieced together and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, we will see you tomorrow.